Is it too dark in here? Is this okay? Is this okay? We may have to turn some lights on the back when the sun goes down, but is that okay? All right.
sheet for the attendance. Just, I got to do that one more time, and then never again. It's kind of dark in here. I don't know. Can you still see that, or is it better with a little? It's fine. Just okay. Okay, so that's what we'll do, huh? We'll have uh, quiz number one a week from Thursday. So that's the, the 21st. Say yeah. Right? And what are you going to bring in on the day of quiz number one? The take-home quiz completed. You got me? All right. And then, uh, hey, on, let me join this. A lot of stuff going on here. Lots of stuff. Ooh. Okay, so remember these guys, the little body diagrams? The first seven, you got me? I'm going to give you one of these seven body diagrams that are blank, and you're going to fill it in. Say yes. No? Okay. Which one? That's a good one. That's a good one. Like he kind of tried to catch me off guard and maybe I would leak some information. That's good. All right. Okay, now watch. Watch. I think I told you this before, but it bears mentioning one more time. <clears throat> watch. I don't want cheek or chin. Right? I think like an eighth month, eight month old no, and nose, shin. Say yeah. I want the medical term. Tell me you got that. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> and when you learn these medical terms real quick, when you learn the medical terms for the specific body parts, this also helps you learn arteries and veins in the body. That's why I'm having you do it. So watch. Where's the brachial artery? There you go. When a doctor says, draw some blood from the antecubital space, where are you going to draw it from? 
If they check, it says check your pedal pulse, where are you going to check it? On top of your foot, say yes. If somebody has an inguinal hernia, where do they have a hernia? In their girl, say yes. See how that works? That's why you got to know that. So one of these diagrams is going to be on there. Say yeah. yeah. And then you're going to have the questions, the essay questions. You're going to write out good answers and press Timmy. And then you're going to bring in completed the take-home quiz. Say yeah. If you don't think you're going to do good on the take-home quiz, put somebody else's name on it. Are you with me? Okay, here we go. So last time we were we spoke, right? We were talking about the cell membrane and how stuff gets into and out of cells, yes? Okay, I'm gonna continue that little conversation. So if we look again, this is what I want you to understand. This is what I want you to make sure that you grasp. When, when I draw this picture, capillary, and this cell, what I'm talking about, this little circle here, represents the cell membrane. And we learned that the cell membrane is a phospholipid bilayer. Remember that? Right? And that all cell membranes are selectively permeable. Say yes. That stuff from the blood, if it's supposed to go in a cell, there's going to be a way that it can get in there. And if stuff in the cell has to go into the blood, there's going to be a way for it to get out. Say yes. And this is really important because there's different stuff in the blood. Yep. If this thing from the blood has to get into the cell, one of the ways that it can get into the cell is it can bind to a specific cell receptor embedded in the cell membrane. Say yes. And what I'm about to say, tattoo it, right? Right here. Because different cells do different things, they're gonna have different cell receptors embedded in their cell membrane. And it is that understanding that allows you to begin to understand how pharmacology works by real smart people with the tape and pocket protectors they learn the different receptors that are embedded in the cell membrane and what chemicals bind there. So if you know what, what chemical binds to a specific receptor on a cell, you can then follow what it makes that cell do. So if you want that cell to do this chemical reaction more, you find a drug that stimulates that receptor. If you want that chemical reaction to stop doing it, you find something that blocks that receptor, say yes. That's huge that you understand that. Who's with me? Who's following this? Okay, that's real good. All right, so hang on. So here we go. Um, let me list them out, the things that I've done so far. Did I show you that my, did I explain why my house is getting burned down? Yeah. Okay, good. Number one, simple diffusion. Now, when you explain this, what are the two things that simple, simply diffuse? And you better tell me where oxygen goes and where carbon dioxide goes. I know where you'd like me to go. <laughs> so yeah, oh, I'm recording. Good for Timmy. Who's supposed to tell me? Pinch her real hard. What's number two? What's the second way? That's right, specific ion leak channels. And you better tell me which ions go from where to where. Say yes. What's another one? Voltage-gated channels, right? Voltage-gated channels. So number three. Voltage-gated channels. What does that mean? What do voltage-gated channels do? What does voltage imply? 
electricity. So voltage-gated channels are ion channels, and they open or close at a specific voltage inside that cell. Say yes. And only cells, I'm simplifying right now, only cells that can produce electricity have voltage-gated channels. That makes sense, right? Okay, that's really good. Number four, I'm going to explain to you the sodium-potassium pump. Are you with me? The sodium-potassium pump is a player. He's or she is a badass. I'm not even playing. You have no idea the huge implications it has in the body, and I'm about to explain them to you. What's the goal of the body? That's right. Okay, now watch. Here's the capillary. Here's the cell. Who's with me? I always do this, man. The cell looks kind of jacked up. Embedded through the entire thickness of the cell membrane are these specific ion leak channels. This one's kind of fat. Did you see that? Are you with me? So you have calcium that's highly concentrated in the blood. Where does it want to go? Into the cell. And it can only go through where? A calcium channel. And then you have potassiums. Where's potassium highly concentrated? In the, right, because I put it in the cell. And where does it want to go? Into the blood. And it can only go through a specific potassium channel. And where's sodium highly concentrated? See, I put it in the cell. I thought I could trick you. You guys are sharp. Sodium is highly concentrated in the blood. And where does it want to go? Into the cell. And the only way it can get into the cell is through a specific sodium ion leak channel. Say yes. Okay, watch. If the goal of the body is to maintain homeostasis, then why isn't there equal amounts of sodium and potassium in the blood and the cell? I'll give you that. I'll give you that. But I don't even want to talk about that. Not yet. Watch. How many people had a pool when they were a kid, a round pool? You think you were better than everybody else? <laughs> My neighbor had a pool, right? So we, all the kids would get in it, right? And we'd start making a whirlpool, right? And you get that thing cooking. And then you kind of ball up and let the current take you, right? That's diffusion. You're going with the current. With the current, with the current, say yeah. Then you would try, you would turn around against the current and try to move against the current. That required work. Say yes. Here we go. Write this down. I'm not even kidding. You really need to get this tattooed. Like on your eyelid, your right eyelid. So you go, oh yeah. Watch embedded in every cell of your body it embedded in every cell membrane of your body embedded in every cell membrane of your body there is a pump and this pump pumps and this pump pumps sodium and potassium so what do you think the name of this pump is? The sodium potassium pump. <laughs> That's so stupid. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Every cell of your body has this pump, sodium potassium pump. Are you with me? Here we go. So I'm going to show you this nice little video that I ripped off. Where is it? Here it is. Look, it's in color too. I'm going to add to this drawing or to this video. 
So watch. Let me explain to you where you're at. Here's the capillary, and here's the cell membrane. Are you with me? So this is the blood, and this is the inside of the cell. Inside of the cell. So this is the outside. Say yeah. Okay. So embedded in the cell membrane, you have these ion leak channels. Where's sodium highly concentrated? One more time, for old time's sake. In the blood. Where does it want to go? Into the cell. So it goes through a sodium channel. And then, I'm going to change the color to make it cool. Oh, my, yeah. You got embedded through the entire thickness of the cell membrane. You got a potassium ion channel. Where's potassium highly concentrated? In the cell. Where does it want to go? Into the blood. Say yes. Okay, so this is what we want to do. I want to bring this home to you guys so you get it. So I think we should do it starting maybe today. All right? So watch. What I want you to do, I will be the blood, Timmy, and you will be the inside of the cell. How about that? That sound good? And watch. Every day when you come to class, you give Timmy three dollars. And when you leave, Timmy gives you two dollars back. We should really do this. At the end of the semester, who's going to be negative and who's going to be positive? Right. I always make sure it works out that way. I'm not even kidding. This morning, I'm taking a shower. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm the blood, right? I'm the blood. Got to make So you're going to be negative, and I'm going to be positive. And any time you have a difference in electrical charge, a positive charge on the outside and a negative charge on the inside, that cell can produce electricity. Say yes. You got that. So the reason that sodium is highly concentrated in the blood and potassium is highly concentrated in the cell is because of the sodium-potassium pump. Listen up, and I want this explained. The sodium-potassium pump takes three sodiums that leaked in. Three sodiums that leaked in. So you got sodium leaking in, and the pump pumps three sodiums out into the blood. Where does sodium naturally want to go? Where does it want to go naturally? Into the cell, right? So the pump works against the current. You're pumping it. It's like a sub-pump, right? You're pumping that water against the current. Say yes. So watch. If the electricity goes out in your house, does your sub-pump work? No. So your basement gets flooded. So the sodium-potassium pump, because it works against the current, requires energy, cellular energy. Who's with me? So when three sodiums leak in, what does the pump do? It pumps three sodiums back out. Say yes. And at the same time, when two potassiums leak out, it will pump two potassiums, potassiums, back into the cell. So it works against the concentration gradient. And be, watch. And because you're moving three positive ions out, like you're giving Timmy three bucks, and then I'm only giving you two bucks back, the outside of the cell is going to become positive, the inside is going to be negative, and that cell has the ability to produce electricity. Say yes. And you have this in every cell of your body. Every cell of your body has got a pump. And when this thing gets jacked up, you jacked up. Watch. How many people um, uh, go out and drink on the weekends? 
Were you just scratching your head or were you going to try and raise your hand? It's okay. I go drinking too. I just stay at my house though, sit in the corner, just kind of rock. Okay. And then you know what you did? If you're young, right, this is what you did. You went out and you had a bottle with a bottle. Then you go to McDonald's at, late at night and you say, I want two Big Macs, two large fries, and a Diet Coke. You with me? Then you go home, you'd sleep, right? And you wake up at the crack of noon, and then you go to the bathroom, and you look in the mirror and like, still look good. Ain't that right? When you're young. When you start getting older, you look at a rice cake, and you got five pounds of cellulite on your butt. Are you with me? Watch. When you're young, your cells are naturally leaky to sodium and potassium. They're much more leaky. So if they're more leaky to sodium and potassium, what does the pump have to do to maintain the concentration of sodium in the blood and potassium in the cell? It has to work harder. So when you eat stuff, your cells will make energy to make this pump work. Say yes. Tell me you're following this. When you get older, your cells become less leaky to sodium and potassium. So what doesn't the pump have to do? Doesn't have to work as hard. That's why as people get older, there's a natural tendency for them to get overnourished. <laughs> Tell me you got that. Watch, watch, clinical here. You ever hear of thyroid hormone? Thyroid hormone makes cells leaky to sodium and potassium. So if your thyroid hormone is low, your cells become less leaky to sodium and potassium. So if the cells become less leaky to sodium and potassium because you have hypothyroidism, is this pump going to have to work a lot? Less leaky. Wait, no. Good. That was the other choice. <laughs> so everything that you put into your pie hole that used to be going to make energy that you would burn to make energy, make this pump work, now gets stored on your hips, butt, and gut, and you get tubby. That's why people with hypothyroidism get tubby. Say yes. Is that important? It better be one of the ways that stuff gets into and out of a cell. And I want this whole thing, I want this explained to me, how the pump works. Do you understand that? Say, yeah, I just explained it to you. Any questions? Guys? We're good. Okay, watch. Um, I have a night class in uh, Kenosha. There was a little concern, so I'm here to quell your fears. Timmy, I'm repeating myself in a lot of questions. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And you're going to repeat yourself. Say yes. If you see question two, right, you're writing an answer to question seven, and you say, see question two, I will see question two and mark it wrong. Do you understand? I don't care. Anytime you put sodium potassium pump, you explain it. Say yes. You don't do things right once. You do them right every single. Say yeah. So, watch. How many ways did I explain to you stuff enters or leaves a cell? Four, right? Now watch. Number five. Explain the concept of active transport. Are you with me? I'm going to explain the concept of active transport. <laughs> See how easy this class is? It's ridiculous. I'm going to write it out. Ready?
active transport, any process that moves stuff into or out of the cell and requires energy is active transport. Any process that moves stuff into or out of a cell that requires the cell to use energy is active transport. What's an example of active transport? The sodium potassium pump. So when I, you give me two examples of the sodium potassium pump, or two examples of active transport, and you use sodium potassium pump, you're going to explain sodium potassium pump again. Say yes. I taught a class, a pathophysiology class, last summer. Yeah? And there was a student, fourth semester nursing student. And I explained the sodium potassium pump. And when you get later on, as you matriculate through the process, you'll understand its importance even more. And she looked at me and she said, we have a pump in our body? I'm going to yell at some cosmetology students when they walk by just so you know. If I open up the door. You know what I do when they have their, their thing at the end of the semester, their big test? So when they're taking their big test, I walk by, hey, 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 hey. Isn't that rude? Is that mean? I don't think so. How many people got that active transport, sodium potassium pump? Are you with me? Okay, I'm going to give you another example of active transport. See how nice I am? How many examples do you need? How many did I give you? Right, so I'm going to give you another one. Yay. Ready? Okay, Reggie, watch. About six or seven years ago for my girlfriend's birthday, did I tell you this? I bought her a piano. Did I tell you this? Okay, watch. A baby grand piano. Is that a big piano? Even it's a baby. It's like a baby Huey, right? Those things are big. So the guy was going to charge me like $700 to deliver it. And I'm like, no way. In retrospect, I would have paid twice that. So we're trying to get this thing into the house. You know what her job was? Holding the door. So I said to her, you couldn't play the flute or the violin. Anyways, here's my point. When you have to move something big into or out of the house, does it require energy? Yes. So anytime you have to move something big into or out of a cell, it requires energy. Say yes. So you need to know this. When you move stuff big into a cell, into a cell, it's called endocytosis, and in. You got me? And there are basically two types of endocytosis that you need to understand. Number one is phagocytosis. That's a terrible color. Why didn't somebody yell at me? Can you see it? Not really, right? Can you see it? I can't see it on my screen. Phagocytosis. What does phag mean? What does polyphagia mean? Right, eating. So phag means eat. So cells eat stuff. Are there parts of your body or cells in your body that eat stuff? 
What? What cells? What's that? White blood cells eat stuff. Say yes. When it gets a bac you see a bacteria, white blood cells say, hey, what's up with that? And we'll eat it. Watch. Here is phagocytosis. Watch it. Here it comes. What this cell's doing, this is actually a white blood cell. Okay. And it's about to eat a Tic Tac to kind of freshen its breath. So here's the cell membrane. And how it does it is when it's going to take something big into it, it will bind that big thing to the cell membrane and it will actually wrap the cell membrane around it and pinch it off like a turd. Watch. Watch. See? So it'll actually wrap it around, the cell membrane around, so nothing else can get in and then pinch it off. It will actually make that noise too. And then what will happen is this part of the cell membrane will fall apart and there are enzymes inside that white blood cell that destroy that bacteria. Tell me you got that. So one of the ways that you move big stuff into the cell is through the process of endocytosis. An example of that is phagocytosis. And remember, this is very important, Anytime you move something big into the cell, it requires energy. So that's a form of active transport. Say yes. What's an example of active transport? Phagocytosis. What happens? The cell binds to the thing it wants to bring in. It folds the cell membrane over it and then pinches it off and brings it into the cell. Say yes. Another example of endocytosis is when cells got to divide, they need to get some water. They need to drink water. So the cell will actually fold on water and it will bring water into the cell. And that process of bringing water into the cell, you better write this down, better not pout, is called penocytosis. So penocytosis deals with fluid. Phagocytosis deals with stuff. Who's with me? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Watch. I'm, I'm just going to tell you this because I wouldn't expect you to know this. Well, I'll ask anyways. Is cholesterol big? Is there a channel to let cholesterol out of a liver cell and go into the blood? No. Good. That's very good. So you have to get it out of the cell somehow, right? So watch. I'm making this up. Just follow along. Here's a liver cell. One of the things that a liver cell makes is cholesterol. So cholesterol is big. Look at that. And this is no joke. This is exactly how cholesterol looks like under a microscope. I stayed up till 2.37 in the morning to memorize that shape, and I've drawn it for you. Right? Never let it be said I couldn't do the least I could do. So watch. What will happen is the cell will actually put a cell membrane, a piece of cell membrane around it, and then it will fuse with the original cell membrane, and it will push that cholesterol out into the blood. Observe. Here we go. That's water. That's like you got diarrhea. Forget that. I don't I don't care about that. Okay, watch. So you got a liver cell here? Hang on. The cholesterol, it's packaged in a little cell membrane and then it's dumped into the blood. So when big things, listen up. When big things have to be moved out of the cell, oh man, when big things got to be moved out of the cell, that's called exocytosis. Exit, yeah. So let me get there, stop it. So here, you got this little secretory vesicle we'll talk about. 
let's say this is cholesterol, it's going to scooch to the cell membrane, it's going to bind to it, it's going to actually add additional cell membrane when it binds to it, and then dump the contents into the blood. So that's how you transport the stuff that cells make into the blood. Say yaba. Guys? Okay. There it goes. Bam. So, what are examples? Another example of active transport? You have endo and exocytosis. So explain the phagocytosis, penocytosis, and then exocytosis. Say yesocytosis. You got me? Okay. All right. So do you still want us using the uh, um, sodium potassium? Yes. Yep. So one is sodium potassium. The other one is endoexocytosis. You got me? And explain. In en um, endocytosis, there's penocytosis and phagocytosis. Say yes. Explain those. Who's with me? Am I, am I being clear? Am I clear? When you explain two forms of active transport, you're going to explain the sodium potassium pump, and then you're going to explain endo and exocytosis. And in endocytosis, I gave you two examples. You're going to explain both of them. Say yes. I can't be any clearer than that. Can I? I know. I know. You're over there smiling because you're like, I can't believe this class. Everything I need is right here. I know. I would have loved this class. Except I wouldn't have liked the instructor. How many people think this class is easy? Right, watch. Did you look at gateway signs? Life is big. Be prepared. A and P is big. Be prepared. What did you expect? I always ask people like that. What did you expect? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, the hip bone's connected to the leg bone. Like, I got to know where the leg bone is. Right? Do me a favor. Just ask all my former students who are nurses now what they thought of it. So is bulk transport just another term for? Endo and exocytosis. Yep. Say yeah. Got me. Who's with me? Guys? Okay. Watch. You need to get this. Need to get this. What's the goal of the body? That's very good. What part of your brain controls hunger, temperature, and thirst? That's very good. So I'm going to need to explain to you now a concept, and you need to get it. All right? Ready? Here we go. This concept is called osmolarity. You learned about this in chemistry where you had to make a one molar solution. Say yeah. All right. So osmolarity is a measurement. And it is, it's a measurement in your book. It's called solute over solvent. Okay? Timmy likes to simplify. What's in the blood? That's very good. Water and stuff. 
And unless you've been tipping it back like crazy, what's the only solvent you have in your body? Water. So osmolarity is really a measurement of stuff over water. Who's with me so far? Can I tell you something? I, I learned something a, a couple of years ago. Because I would go over this in my general class, and I'm, I would think to myself, how can you not get that? Like, how can you not get that? Are you following me? And then I realized that there's a lot of thinking that goes on in what I'm about to explain to you. And you have never done that type of thinking. Like, you've never thought about this. Do you follow? So this is completely new to you. So I reevaluated that. And now I look at it, I'm like, this is actually kind of complicated. But Timmy's going to try to explain it down for you, say, yeah. But you got to buy in. Ready? Here we go. So what's, the, what's osmolarity? What is it? And what does it measure? It measures the ratio of stuff to water. Say yeah. What's the goal of the body? Okay, here we go. Watch. And I'm going to say this, and at first it won't make a lot of sense, but then I'll try to make it make more sense. It don't make no never mind the stuff. The ratio of stuff to water in the blood has to be equal to stuff and water in the cell. Say yes. So watch. Where is sodium highly concentrated? In the blood. Where is potassium highly concentrated? In the cell. And we're going to call this the H -thal cell, or P. Diddy, just Diddy. You with me? Potassium is in the cell, all right? Let me get rid of P. Diddy for a minute. Now, what I'm trying to explain to you is that what I'm seeing in this little picture is that the osmolarity of the blood is equal to the osmolarity of the cell. Right? There's three stuffs and the same amount of water. And there's three stuffs and the same amount of water. Who's with me? Okay. If you put more sodium in the blood, it will try to leak into the cell, but what's going to pump it out? The sodium-potassium pump. So what will happen to the amount of sodium in the blood if you add more sodium to the blood? It will go up. Tell me you got that. So watch. You say this class sucks, you will get no argument from me, none. And you say, I'm going to take it at MATC, but I'm going to go to the purple sombrero and I'm going to eat me, I'm going to get me some uh, Long Island iced teas. And they always have like pretzels and stuff. Say, yeah. And it's always a good idea to put your hands in those pretzels and eat them. Because nobody else has touched them. There's got to be like nine pounds of boogers in those things, man, for real. So if you eat salt, what's going to happen to the amount of salt in your blood? It's going to go up. So what has happened to the osmolarity of the blood? What has happened to the osmolarity of the blood? It goes up, right? You added more stuff. That's math. I can't help you there, right? It goes up. 
What's the goal of the body? So you better write this down. Tattoo it right next to, I don't know, whatever I told you to tattoo it to. If stuff can't move, water can always move. Who's with me? And I'm going to continue and then I'm going to show you. And water always moves from an area of Lots of water and less stuff. This is important. Through what? Through what? A selectively permeable membrane. Be better be in your answer or you get that marked wrong. Selectively permeable membrane. And what selectively permeable membrane are we talking about? Cell membrane, say yes. Selective permeable membrane to an area, to an area, this is terrible. I always do this. To an area of more stuff and less water. Tell me you're following this. So watch, in this little picture, this little picture, you went to the purple sombrero, whatever, you ate some salt, what's going to happen to the amount of salt in your blood? It's going up. It's going to leak in, but the pump's going to pump more of it out, so it's going to remain high in the blood. So essentially, sodium can't move. So if stuff can't move, what can always move? And in this case, where is water going to move? It's going to move from the hypothalamus, where there is a lot of water and less stuff, through a selectively permeable membrane to an area of more stuff and less water. Say yes. And when you dehydrate the hypothalamus, it triggers thirst. That's why people get thirsty when they eat salt. Say yes. How many people got that? I want that whole thing explained to me. Say yeah. Now watch. I know what people are going to do, and I'm going to put the kibosh right on it. Because after it only took me 15 years to figure this out. Sharp as a marble, this one. You ain't going to draw no picture. You can draw a picture, but if it don't come with an accompanying explanation, it's wrong. Do you follow that? Say yes. Okay, watch. Where is sodium high? In the blood. So is every cell of your body exposed to this high sodium level? Yes, it is. So every cell of your body, every cell of your body, all cells are exposed to this high sodium level. So what's going to happen to all of the water, or not all the water, but some of the water in all the cells of your body? It's going to move from a low osmolarity through a selectively permeable membrane to high. And watch. Anytime you increase the amount of water in your blood, Anytime you increase your blood volume, directly or indirectly, indirectly this time, that will cause an increase in... That's why people with high blood pressure are told to eat a low-sodium diet. Do you have any idea how good this information is? You know what? 
It's so good. It's more than this class is worth. At break, everyone leave. 37 cents up front. I mean, for real. How many people got that? Want that whole thing? Say yeah. Okay. Define osmosis and diffusion. I defined diffusion, didn't I? I sure did. Osmosis only deals with water. The only thing that osmosis is is water. Tell me you got that. Now don't write that because I will mark it wrong. I just said osmosis only deals with water. I didn't define it. Say yes. Osmosis is the movement of water from an area of a lot of water and less stuff through a selectively permeable membrane to an area of more stuff and less water. That's osmosis. Why are you looking at me like that, Emma? I'm trying to see the time on your shirt so I can write three. You know what I'm going to do? <laughs> I'm going to change the time on this to like 20 minutes ahead. <laughs> That's so wrong. See how easy I'm making this class? All you got to do is work that four letter word. See, yeah. Who's with me? You followed that. That's osmosis. Now, watch. 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 Osmosis works both ways. Osmosis works both ways. Watch. Don't write this down. Just listen to this. There's a big freaking protein found in your blood that's made by your liver. It's called albumin. Just listen to this. This is top quality info too, by the way. You got me? And it don't make no matter the size of the particle, it's the number of particles. So a big freaking albumin has the same affects osmolarity the same way as a little tiny sodium atom. Are you following me? It's the, si it's the number, not the size. What organ makes albumin? The liver. What happens to your liver when you drink booze? Nothing. It makes it better. It cleans the liver. My liver is like, it's like clean as a whistle. What does it do to your liver? Have you ever seen somebody die from like alcoholism? Watch. You know what, forget it, I'm not going to explain that. You don't need to know that. In the words of Taryn, this is too much information. Well, I give you more when it's needless. You can learn that later. Tell me you got that. Okay? So let's see what we got. Uh, osmosis and diffusion. Active transport. Why consuming salt makes you thirsty. Did I do that? Here we go. How many people watched the video on the three homeostatic mechanisms found in the body? Did you watch it? Okay. What's normal for your blood sugar? What's the only fuel your brain can use? Glucose, right? How do you feel when you're hungry? Cranky. Right? Don't you? I know I do. Like if, I get mad sometimes in my night class because I forget to eat. So I get, uh, students called it uh, hangry. So you're hungry, so you get angry. So when people's blood sugar gets really low, they will get nasty. You ever see somebody when their blood sugar is really low? Like me right now, my blood sugar is low. I'm looking some, for something to throw. Okay, watch. And I know I don't have to go over this, but I'm going to go over it anyways. What's the organ responsible for maintaining homeostasis with respect to blood sugar? 
the pancreas, right? And what does the pancreas release when your blood sugar is high? Insulin. Insulin. You better get this. What up, G? See? OG. What's the only time you have insulin circulating in your blood in normal physiology? It is when your blood sugar is high. You got me? So can glucose go from high concentration in the blood to low concentration in the cell? Meaning, can it simply diffuse? No. So this is the important piece if you're ever going to understand the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. In order for insulin to do its job, insulin has to bind to a functioning insulin receptor on the cell membrane. Say yes. And when it does that, it will open up a glucose gate and allow glucose to go from high concentration in the blood to low concentration in the cell. Say yes. How long is insulin secreted from the pancreas? So watch, watch. And this is what people like to do. And this is where they lose a lot of points. And then they look at WebAdvisor for the horticulture classes. Right? You're going to complete your thought. Do you understand? You're going to explain what happens when your blood sugar goes up, why insulin's released from the pancreas, the function of insulin, and then why the pancreas stops releasing insulin. And the reason the pancreas stops releasing insulin is because your blood sugar is back to homeostasis. T can I get an amen? So when you write out your three homeostatic mechanisms, you're going to say, and the body comes back to homeostasis. That's completing the thought. Say yes. Mm -hmm. I can't wait till you don't. I just can't wait to read that and just... Say yes. So watch. If you watch a little video, I'm going to recapitulate. That's the wrong word. Reiterate. In a person who's a type 1 diabetic, when they eat fruity pebbles, by the way, does anybody like fruity pebbles in here? Okay. All right. Just so you know, my man, I'm taking 50 points off your first quiz because you like the, that stuff. That is cancer in a bowl. And smelling that stuff, man, it makes you want to vomit bile like projectile. Watch. In people who are a type 1 diabetic, they don't secrete insulin. So what do they have to take the rest of their lives? Insulin. In people who are type 2 diabetics, what's their problem? They have failed insulin receptors. So you can give them insulin until the cows come home. It ain't going to lower their blood sugar. In the early stages of type 2 diabetes, they got insulin coming out of their eyeballs. It's I'm not even kidding. See it coming out. So their problem is the non-functioning insulin receptor. Who's with me? So there's a drug out there called metformin. And it will tell the cells of the body to put more of these insulin receptors on the cells. Do you got that? How many people followed that? That's good. Now you know the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Did you know that walking in the door? See? So that's extra 2. 38 cents. Can I show you something real quick? How many people had a baby over 9 pounds? You're six times greater risk for developing type 2 diabetes later in life. Do you know why? I don't know. I just wanted to tell you that and give you some bad news. That's it. <laughs> okay, watch. In people who have the propensity, 701 and bringing your propensity, people who have an increased likelihood of developing a particular disease, in this case, uh, type 2 diabetes, it rears its ugly head during pregnancy. Watch. The body does stuff that makes sense, yes? What's more important, the baby or the mother? 
the baby, the baby's going to perpetuate the species. Once the fetus pops out, the ma can just kind of drift away. Right? She's perpetuating the species. So the baby is going to try to survive over the mother. They, the baby will do that. The baby will take stuff from you. Let them watch your kids. So, watch. During fetal development, the most important part of the body for the fetus is the nervous system. And what's the only fuel that the nervous system can use? Glucose. So in women, pregnant women, there is a natural decrease in the number of insulin receptors because you don't want to eat a bowl of fruity pebbles, your blood sugar go up, and then all the glucose go into the mother's cells. Do you follow that? So when they decrease, you're guaranteeing of sending more glucose to the baby. Say yeah. But if you develop type 2 diabetes or gestational diabetes, you're sending a ton of glucose to the baby. They don't need all that glucose. So they start converting it into fat. That's why they come out and they be tubby. And they come out, some of them, like if they're a boy, they'll actually have a tattoo of mom and hair. And they got a pack of Marlboro Light, man thought 100's in a box, rolled up in their sleeve. And they're chewing tobacco and ting. I hate me too. Tell me you got that. So even if you didn't develop gestational diabetes, the mere fact that your baby was big increases your risk. Say, yeah. That is, of course, beautiful. Now watch. If you understand osmosis and diffusion, you now understand the three classic signs of high blood sugar. Are you ready? Here we go. I'm going to go through them real quick. Were those on the video? They weren't on the video? Well, tough. You're going to have to know. Ready? If your blood sugar is 500, do you have insulin circulating? Say no. No. Right? So your blood sugar is really high. It's so high, it's actually leaking out of the capillary right there. Do you see that? Can I tell you a real quick story? Three years ago, teaching a class in Kenosha, and I had this student. She memorized every word I said, everything, and she wrote everything down. So she actually wrote when she was trying to explain this, the blood sugar is so high that it's actually leaking out of the capillary. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. And here's the thing, watch. That had to be more work than actually trying to understand it. Do you understand that? Like, do you realize how much work that was? I mean, every word. She's probably, she's probably smoking crack someplace now. <laughs> After that. Okay, here we go. Now watch, what part of your body controls hunger, temperature, thirst? H. Thel, or P. Diddy, yeah? Okay, what happens to the osmolarity of the blood when what up, G? You have to do that, I have to say that. Every time, I have to say it. You know how you just do something? Where's the osmolarity higher, blood or cell? Blood. blood. If what up G can't move because you ain't got insulin, what can always move? Water. And water always moves from an area of a lot of water and less stuff through a selectively permeable membrane to an area of more stuff and less water. Say yes. And when you remove water from the hypothalamus, that triggers? That's why people with high blood sugar drink all the time. Say yeah. Watch it. When your blood sugar is high, is it just by the capillary by P. Diddy? 
Age thou? It's high all where? All over. Yeah, high all where. <laughs> so what's happening to the water in all the cells of your body? What's happening to it? It is getting osmotically sucked out. What up, G? It's getting osmotically sucked out. And I just told you, anytime you increase your blood volume, you increase your blood pressure, and anytime you increase your blood pressure, you have to pee, pee. <laughs> That's why people, when their blood sugar is high, have to pee more. Watch, if you're sucking down what appears to be juice, Did you just swoop that out of a puddle? That's water? It has flavor, flavoring in it. Oh. What do you got to do 15 minutes later after you suck down some water? You got to pee because what did you do to your blood volume? And anytime you increase your blood volume, you increase your blood pressure and that makes you pee. Tell me you got that. Watch. What's the only fuel the brain can use? Can you get glucose from the blood into P. Diddy? Where's P. Diddy? Wait, where is he? Oh, did I? For real? There. What the hell is that? Oh, okay, here we go. There, forget that. If your blood sugar is really high, say yeah. Can you get glucose from the blood into the hypothalamus to feed it? What up, G? So if you can't get food into your brain to feed it, what does the brain think? You're hungry all the time. Say yeah. I did this this morning, right? And I know you've done it, and don't deny it. Everybody's done it. So I'm coming to class today, and I pull up. i got to get some gas. And I pull up, and I pull up not close enough to the pump. So I get the thing, and then I think to myself, yeah, this is going to work. I'm going to rip the pump out from that, you know, the little island, and then be able to get it in there. Because you see people all the time, right? So anyways, here's my point. I, the gas was right there. I just couldn't get it into where I needed to get it. You have tons of sugar. You just can't get it into where you need it, right? So even though you got tons of blood sugar, your brain is starving. That's beautiful. Oh, can I show you something? Watch. You're not going to believe this. What's the treatment for high blood sugar? And you said it exactly the way you're supposed to say it. Insulin. Like, Tim, you're an idiot. <laughs> Give him insulin. Watch. If you know what's wrong, you know what to do. Is water getting sucked out of their cells and peed into the toilet or the gurney or maybe on you? You got me? So you have to rehydrate those cells. So that's why when people come in and their blood sugar's real high, you start big old IVs on them and you give them fluid because all the fluid is getting sucked out of the cells and you got to put it back in. See how simple that is? Do you see the simplicity in this? The beauty of it? I'm telling you, if you know the fundamental principles, I'm not even kidding. People they will do this. When they see you walking, people will just kind of go like that. And just let you walk by. <laughs> Anybody? I hate me too. I hate me too. Okay. Do you ever wish you were somebody else for a while? Did I ask this class? 
Like, you ever think of something stupid you did and then flip yourself off? <laughs> Who, who's done that? Right? Okay. Right? You're, you're like driving in a car and you think of something you did like maybe 10 years ago. Right? Like, God, I can't believe I did that. Right? Yeah. That's why I could never run for public office, right? There's things I've done I'm going to my grave with. Right? I ain't telling nobody. Yep. It's not bad, as far as you know. How many people got this? Yes or no? Okay. Let's see how we did. Boom. I'm not going to describe the anatomical. I refuse to. It's in the, I was going to say, it's in the book. <laughs> this is the anatomical position. Everything in the anatomical position is, when you reference a body, is based off the anatomical position. Do you follow that? Mm -hmm. The palms are face forward, arms and legs are spread, like you caught a case. <laughs> yeah. You know... <laughs> I, uh, how many people here have been in jail before? You've never been in jail? Have you? Wait. <laughs> okay, this is my Twitter account. Listen up. I don't know how you join it or whatever. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put questions... Uh, like the, you know, anatomy and physiology questions. Are you following me? And if you answer them and answer them correctly, you'll get some extra credit. Say yeah. That's my Twitter account. Do you know what that is? Do you know what Twitter is? Either do I. I don't. Somebody else is handling this. I'm just feeding her the questions. Do you want to do something like that or no? Yeah. What? No. I don't have Twitter. Facebook. Facebook. Well, I guess you ain't getting no extra credit, are you? How? Look, it took her two seconds to make a Twitter account. Well, here's why. That's more work for me, right? Did you forget? First day, there's an I and a me and Timmy, no you. How can I make Timmy's life easier? What have I done for Timmy today? You guys are just, you don't, you don't pay attention to the important things. Say yes, guys. How do you do the Facebook thing? I don't know how to do that. How do you do it on Facebook? What is that? How do you do it? You just post. I post something on Facebook? You just get a page. You get an account. And you sign up for a page, and it's when you have your I have a page. Then it says what's on your mind. Question mark. And you can post whatever it is, and then you post. And then people reply to it. How do I know it's you replying? I don't have a picture. How do you know it's me? <laughs> no. I have a face that's made for radio. The students, have, they go, Tim, why don't you put yourself in these videos? Are, I said, are you kidding me? Okay, so, all right, I think I can do that. Listen up. Listen up. Write this down. Write this down. Wait, see it ends right there. Who's got a, a smartphone? Well, who's on Facebook right now? Everyone, right? Who isn't on Facebook? Raise your hand. Right, about two of you.
My Facebook page is called Two Curved Lines in a Circle, oddly enough. So I posted videos there on Facebook. So I can I gotta I don't know how to get onto that account though. I'll find a way. And I'll post questions on Twitter and Facebook. How does that sound? Right? And I'm putting a time limit on it. Right? How many people check their Facebook daily? How many people check their Facebook every five seconds? Right? So this is the Twitter, and then look for the Facebook. And then I'll put them on there, and you answer the question, you got to get it right. Say yeah. Is that okay? Right. I haven't been on there in a long time. When's the last time I posted a video? Maybe a year ago. So over a year ago. No, if you get the question right, you'll get some extra credit. Say yeah. Right, because what I want to do is I want to tie it to your phone. Because watch, every time you hear the little bing, you are conditioned like Pavlov's dog, right? I got to look. It's probably really important, right? Like my neighbor's got an ingrown toenail. Yeah, I had to read that. You following me? So here, here's an opportunity to use that conditioning from, to educate yourself a little bit, right? Say yeah. You know what's weird is I'm the, one of the only teachers here that actually uses all of this technology. Do you have teachers who write on their stuff and then record it and stuff? Right. So leave some more money up. Nobody left any money at break. How, are, you, are you with me? So that if you have a Twitter account, then Twitter me there, whatever that is. Who cares? Or I'll post something on two curved lines in a circle. But I, gotta, I don't know my password to Facebook, so i got to do something there to get it. So once I get everything straight, I'll start posting, and I'll let you know. I'll put an announcement on Blackboard. A lot of technology going on here. <laughs> do you follow that? Look, I don't care to, if, if you do it or you don't, right? I just want to try to keep you engaged, and the only way I can do it is by everyone looking at their phone. Right? What did we do before cell phones? Just don't know. The world must have came, come to just a complete stop. People just sat around like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Right? And I see my kid, right? Just real quick, we're still on break. Are we? Wait. Okay, give me... How come nobody left 37 cents up there? Who's with me? Quiz number one's in the books. Say yeah. Here we go. Don't hate, appreciate. How many people got the cell diagram printed off? Pull it out. You got this diagram? You got it? Okay, I'd like to point something out. Mine's in color because I'm better than you. No, nothing. How many people work today? Can I tell you? I'm amazed that you even show up. 
right? But that still doesn't, you know, you still got to know the stuff. Say yeah. Okay. Ready? Am I recording? Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a composite cell. Do you know what a composite cell is? brought into one, right? So watch, not all cells have flagellum, not all cells have cilia, not all cells have microvilli. So as we go through the different parts of the cell, I'm going to explain to you where you find those unique parts in each different cell type in the body. And then I'm going to explain the function. Say yeah. So on quiz number two, what you're going to have to do is I'm going to give you a blank cell diagram. You got me? You're going to label it, and you're going to give me a brief description of each part of the cell. Say yes. This is on quiz number two. Say yeah. Okay, so here we go. Watch. Every living cell has associated with it a what? A what? No. A what? Uh, yeah, okay, that was a bad question. Who said capillary? It's a capillary. Right? And how thick are capillaries? And how thick is the cell membrane? And we learned that all cell membranes are selectively permeable, right? Who's with me? We already talked about the cell membrane, right? So the cell membrane is selectively permeable. It's a phospholipid bilayer. Say yes. And what's embedded in the surface of the cell membrane? Say it real loud. Cell receptors. So you better write this down. You got me? What makes a cell a particular cell is the type of receptors that are embedded in the cell membrane. Who's following me? Guys? And because different cells do different things, they're going to have different receptors embedded in their cell membrane. Say yes. OK. Watch. One of the type of receptors that are embedded in cell membranes are these things called desmosomes. Desmosomes are cell receptors. What are cell receptors made out of? What are they made out of? Glycoprotein right? It's the protein portion of the glycoprotein that's important. You got me? What are proteins made out of? Amino acids what? And what's important about the shape of a protein? It determines its function. So the cell, whatever cell it is, is going to build proteins and then put these receptors on the surface of the cell membrane and they're going to have a particular shape. And that shape will only allow specific chemicals from the capillary to bind to it. You got me there. Yes or no? Okay. So one of the cell receptors that you need to know about are these things called desmosomes. 
and I'll simplify it for you. I like to refer to them as recognition receptors. Right? So, do liver cells have the same desmosomes as other liver cells? Yes. That's how a liver cell knows to hang out with other liver cells. That's why you shouldn't find a liver cell in your pancreas. So similar cell types have similar recognition receptors. Think of them as Velcro on the cell membrane. They stick together. Say yes. Now watch, and I'm just talking here now. In people who develop cancer, those cells divide so rapidly that they never grow up and develop recognition receptors. If you don't develop recognition receptors, do you know to hang out with a particular cell type? That's what allows cancer to spread to different parts of the body. Tell me you got that. So you need to know this. Desmosomes are cell receptors. They're recognition receptors. And what they do is they allow similar cells to stick together. Say yeah. And what are these cell receptors mostly made out of? Protein. Protein. Who's with me? And watch, the shape of the cell receptor, because it's mostly made out of protein, excuse me, determines its function. Say yeah. Who's with me? Guys? All right. So let's get back to our little cell here. All right, so watch. The cell membrane, right, it protects the stuff that's inside the cell from the potential bad stuff that's in the blood. Is there bad stuff in your blood? Yeah, look, look. There's a dude over there and he's just kind of walking around. You don't know what he's going to do, right? He might come over and kick your flagellum. Okay, so watch. Every, in this class right now, every cell of your body has a nucleus. And inside the nucleus of every cell is what? DNA. DNA. If you get this right, I'll give you a swig off this coffee that's been sitting here for about three months. Probably got mold in it. Can I tell you a quick story about that? The reason I don't have an office is they kicked me out of mine. I hadn't been there for a while, and I left some food in there. I hadn't been there for like a year. And I went in there one time, and there were spiders hanging out. And then when I had an office in the, that building, the Lincoln building over there, it was on the third floor, and it was always freaking hot, like 100 degrees. And they had these windows, so they were kind of shut really tight. So I brought a hammer and a screwdriver, and I opened it up. And then, watch, I didn't have anything to tie it with, so I took one of my shoelaces and tied it. And then I went to class, and I forgot to close the window that night. And that night, it rained really bad. So I go come back, and I'm thinking, man, I don't know if I close that window or not. And it's on the third floor. And most people don't walk around like this, right? So I'm like, please, God, if I get this thing closed, I'll never open it again. So I'm hanging out the third floor window trying to pull that window shut. And people are walking by, right? And I'm like, just don't look up. And I finally got it closed. But anyways, they kicked me out of my office. That's why I don't have an office.
anybody? They're haters. Okay, better write this down. DNA tells the cell how to put amino acids together. What does DNA tell the cell how to do? Put amino acids together. And what do amino acids build? Protein. Tell me you got that. All right, watch. Listen up because this is true. DNA, every cell of your body has the DNA to make every single protein in your body. Tell me you got that. So all you need is one cell from one person that's intact and you have all of their DNA. That's why like when they want to find out who the killer is, right? They'll have them smoke a pack of Marlboro Light Monthol 100s in a box and then flick the cigarette butt and saliva has skin cells in it. So if they get that, they got the dude's DNA, right? Just so you know, and we'll go over this, 99.3% of all human DNA is identical. We're all in it together. It's that 7 tenths of 1% that is unique, and that's the section they look at to determine if they're the baby's daddy or they're the killer. Tell me you follow that. Right? So, and I'll talk about this. So all I want you to know right now is where is DNA? And what does DNA tell the cell how to put together? And when you string together amino acids, what do you make? That's very good. So watch. Hang on, can you see that? Here. This is a liver cell. How do you know it's a liver cell? I wrote liver on it, okay? <laughs> Hemoglobin is found in a red blood cell. Will a liver cell ever make hemoglobin? No. So it will only make liver proteins. Tell me you got that. How does a liver cell know that it only has to make liver proteins. How does the DNA know? The DNA is just there. How does it know that it's in a liver cell and it's got to make liver proteins? Who said that? Dude, your mouth didn't even move. <laughs> Did you see that? It's like a ventriloquist. Right. So watch. What kind of receptors does a liver cell have? Liver receptors. Tell me you got that. So watch. Here's a chemical. Forget about this guy, right? Here's a chemical in the blood. This chemical can only affect a cell that has the receptor that it matches up with. Are you following that? So when this chemical from the blood binds to that liver receptor, it's going to signal the DNA to build a liver protein. Say yes. That's called gene induction. Do you need to know that? Gene induction? All you need to know is that the only proteins a liver cell makes are liver proteins. And what determines what proteins a cell makes is based on the receptors that are placed in its surface. That's what determines what a cell is. Say yes. That's very good. Okay? So for the cell diagram, what's inside the nucleus of all cells? And what does DNA tell the cell to do? 
how to put the amino acids together to make a particular protein. Say yes. Okay? That's all you need to know. Now, is DNA important? Do you want to damage your DNA? So the DNA is further protected by another membrane called the nuclear envelope. The nuclear envelope protects the DNA. Say yeah. So only certain things from the cell can actually enter the nucleus, and that's what you want, right? You want to make sure that that DNA is pristine. Because let's say, for example, watch, and this can happen. If you don't read the textbook, chemicals from the blood can enter the cell and damage your DNA. So you can get mutated DNA if you don't read the textbook. Do you want to mutate your DNA? No. So what does that tell you? There you go. All right. So watch. Laying out in the sun, good for you or bad for you? Ultraviolet light can damage the DNA of skin cells and they can mutate and they can start dividing uncontrollably and you can get skin cancer. Say yeah. You got that. Right? So again, what protects the DNA? The nuclear envelope. Boom. All right. I'm going to re reiterate. DNA never leaves the nucleus ever. So DNA, when you're going to put together a protein, you put together, you build protein in a part of the cell called the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Don't you think that would be a good name for a rock group? Let's hear it for rough endoplasmic reticulum. They're hit slow motion. I like it like that. what that's juxtaposition right a bald-headed middle-aged white guy who teaches at a technical college trying to sing slow motion <laughs> right that's what makes it funny that's juxtaposition okay where do you put together the amino acids inside the cell to build the protein the rough endoplasmic reticulum okay watch What's cholesterol made out of? What? Fat and protein, right? What do you eat? You just eat fat and protein? What kind of fat, protein, and carbs do you eat? Do you eat Aunt Bessie? We're going to have leg of Aunt Bessie. You don't eat human fats, carbs, and protein. You eat aminal fats, carbs, and, pro and plant fats, carbs, and protein. Yes? Are those different than people carbs, people fat, and people protein? Yes. So what you have to do is you have to take the building blocks of carbs, fats, and protein, get them into your cells, and then make people carbs, people fat, and people protein. Say yeah. So you're going to eat some protein, aminal protein. Those amino acids are going to get into the cell. What inside the cell tells the cell how to put together the amino acids? And where do you specifically build the people protein? Where do you build fat? You guys watched that video, didn't you? Oh, I heard that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what? I'm going to tell you what I tell my human turd for a nephew. You know what he told me the other day? How come you don't give me credit for not drinking or drugging? I've been not drinking and drugging for two months. I go, I haven't been drinking and drugging for 55 years. Where's my medal? When did you get credit for doing what you're supposed to do? Word. Watch. 
better write this down. The rough endoplasmic reticulum is rough because that's a bad part of the cell. You should never go to the rough endoplasmic reticulum after 9 o'clock. <laughs> the reason it's rough is because under a microscope it looks rough, but the rough endoplasmic reticulum contains ribosomes. And ribosomes are where you physically put together the protein. So the ribosomes are like the workbench of the cell. You got your amino acids, you put them on the ribosome, and you put the amino acids, you chemically bond them together. Say yeah. Mm -hmm. All right? Rough. And all of these little things that look like noodle soup, it look kind of like soup, right? These, these membranes are all connected. So they're like a little maze. They're all connected. So the rough endoplasmic reticulum is connected to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, that's where you make lipid, people fat. And the reason it's called smooth is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is the 55-year-old guy who uses the comb over. Then he wears that silk shirt with the big lapels, and he's got a medallion, and he has it unbuttoned all the way down to here. Smooth. Got bell bottoms. And wears Brute by Fabergé. Can I tell you, I don't, I've never met a guy who knows how to wear cologne. They take a freaking shower in that stuff, man. I knew a guy I worked with him when I was working my way through college. He would wear cologne to work. I'm like, dude, you're a guy. You're going to sweat. Now you smell like polo, a nasty form of it. <laughs> and then some women, too, they wear cologne, and it's like, it's like a fog. You go in the elevator, and you start hacking up a lung. Where do you make people fat? Okay, then you have the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus is kind of like the Federal Express of the cell. It's the final staging area where you put cell product together. So watch, watch. What's cholesterol made out of, Brittany? Fat and protein. So if this is a liver cell and you've got to make some cholesterol, Watch, and you better get this. There's going to be a signal, some chemical in the blood. Who cares what it is? It's going to bind to a receptor on the cell. That's going to signal the DNA to begin the process of making the protein portion of that lipoprotein cholesterol. Who's with me? Where do you put the protein portion of the cholesterol together? So you're going to build the protein, right? You're going to take these amino acids, you're going to chemically bond them together. You got me? Where are you going to make the fat portion? In the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And then watch. The protein portion goes to the Golgi apparatus, then the lipid portion goes to the Golgi apparatus, and you put them together. Say yes. So the Golgi apparatus is where you make the final product. Who's with me? You also make people carbs in the Golgi apparatus. I don't know if you know this. Do you guys follow the Olympics at all? Do you? They just added the Golgi apparatus as a, uh, a new event. I got a 9.8 on the Golgi apparatus. Okay. <clears throat> Ready? Watch. The Golgi apparatus is folded cell membrane. So it's a phospholipid bilayer. Who, who's following this? So when you have the cholesterol, and I'll show you in a video, once you have the final product, you package it in a piece of Golgi apparatus membrane, which is really what? 
what is it? Golgi apparatus membrane, really? Cell membrane. And that Golgi apparatus that wrapped the cholesterol now becomes a secretory vesicle. Secretory. You can spell it. You got me? And that secretory vesicle will bind to the cell membrane and through a process of exocytosis will dump the cholesterol into the blood. Who's with me? Guys, yes or no? Okay. So what's a secretory vesicle? Secretory vesicle transports cell product into the blood. And it's really a part of the Golgi apparatus membrane. Let me show you. Where am I? Hang on. Hey, did anybody lose a ring here? It's really nice. They estimate it's worth at $3.2 million. Oddly enough, that's the amount of money I need to retire. I should say it's mine. Okay, watch. Here's endocytosis. Got me? Right? Chemical hits the cell membrane. Cell membrane wraps around it, brings it in. Right? Bam. Here, whoops. Here, this guy right here is the Golgi apparatus. And when you make cholesterol, it wraps it up in a little piece of the Golgi apparatus, and then it will bind to the cell membrane, observe, and it will dump it into the blood. Watch it. So cholesterol, imagine cholesterol is in there, it binds to the cell membrane and then dumps its contents into the blood. That's a secretory vesicle, and it's part of the Golgi apparatus. Say yes. Okay. All right. Let's clean this up a little bit. All right. Watch. Inside all of your cells, you have these things called mitochondria. Mitochondria make cellular energy. Watch. Mitochondria have their own DNA. Mitochondria have their own DNA. So DNA is not only located in the nucleus, well, Na. DNA is not only located in the nucleus, but it's also in the mitochondria. And any part of the cell that has mitochondria is capable of replicating itself. So a cell here, a cell, is if you have a mitochondria, if you need to make more energy, those mitochondria can divide and make more mitochondria. Do you follow that? Anybody here do long distance running? Like maybe to the bathroom and back? Nobody? No, you know why? You're reading the textbook, right? So watch. People who do long distance running, all they are is human mitochondria. If you look at a marathon runner, 
when they're running by, people are handing them water. You shouldn't be handing them water. You should be handing them a cheeseburger. Those guys look anorexic, right? But the difference is they just have more mitochondria. And this is the important piece, and you better include this in your answer. The energy that they make, right, they make it aerobically. So aerobic energy production occurs in the mitochondria. What does aerobic mean? It needs oxygen. Boom. So where do you use oxygen? In the mitochondria. And cells that require more energy have more mitochondria. Do you want your intestines contracting all the time? Right? You know what this class would be? Got to go. Got to go. Got to go. Right? So do you want your heart to not contract some days? No. So the heart has more mitochondria than your intestines. Say yeah. Okay. All right. Flagellum. Where do you find flagellum? Only one cell in the human body has flagellum. What is it? Sperm. Sperm. Watch. Why do guys have testicles? What's that? You better get this. Watch. What makes up flagellum are these protein tubes called microtubules. Microtubules are proteins. What are proteins made out of? Amino acids. Amino acids what? And what's important about the shape of a protein? So if guys didn't have testicles, if the core body temperature is too high and it will change the shape of these microtubules so the sperm won't swim correctly. They'll swim in circles or maybe like even like the backstroke or something. And if they do that, then they're not going to swim up the uterus and fertilize an egg. Say yes. So if, you, if a guy wants to try to impregnate a woman and it ain't happening, and you go to a fertility doctor, the first question the doctor asks the, the guy is, do you wear boxers or tidy whities If you wear tidy whities they pull the scrotum closer to the core, warm the body temperature, and they can change the shape of the flagellum, and the sperm is not going to swim. Tell me you got that. So guys out there, if you don't want to get a woman pregnant, just pull them up tight. <laughs> Walk around. <laughs> Walk around like a Melvin, right, where your underwear are right up here, <laughs> right? So um, tell me you got that. And these things will actually, they will actually rotate, and that's what produces the whipping action for the sperm, okay? And then um, basal body. The basal body is the production site for microtubules. That's where you actually make the microtubules. You following? And they'll rotate. All right. We did good. All right. Here we go. Microvilli. I'm going to give you a quiz. If you get this right, I'll be proud of you. Assuming these are the same length this way. A or 2? Which has a greater surface area? A or 2? A. A. So watch. You find microvilli in two places in the body. You find them in the intestines. Test. Intestines, yes. And you also find them in the kidney. So microvilli are extensions of the cell membrane, and they increase the surface area for absorbing stuff. Let me show you. I probably showed you in the video, didn't I? Did I? I'm 
going to show you again, tough. This is a normal intestine, kind of looks like a vacuum hose, clean as a whistle, yeah? This is a person with Crohn's disease, watch. In Crohn's disease, your immune system didn't get the message that the lining of your intestines is good for you. And it will attack it and destroy it and replace it with scar tissue. So this is all scar tissue and it doesn't absorb food. So if you can't digest and absorb food, how do people with Crohn's disease look? They're very skinny, right? And then this is colitis, ulcerative colitis, colon. The colon doesn't do a lot of digesting and absorbing. You got me? So people with colitis can be tubby, but it looks like somebody took their hand that was wrapped in sandpaper and went up and down their colon. So these people will bleed. They'll have crappy, bloody poop. Do you want that? I don't think so. You want to go to Gateway. Say yeah. All right. And then cilia. Cilia at their base, they have microtubules embedded in them. So cilia will actually beat. It will actually move. Where do you find cilia? That's right. And in the lining of the respiratory tract, cilia always beat from the lower airway to the upper airway. Always. Hang on. So you have cilia that actually move. So watch. And then about every fifth or sixth cell, you have a thing called a goblet cell. And a goblet cell secretes mucus, and it rides on that cilia. So when you take in bad stuff, is there bad stuff in the air? Yeah, pull my finger. So what it will do is the cilia will take that stuff and it will catch it, the mucus and then the cilia will beat it from the lower airway to the upper airway and then you swallow it or spit it out. Say yeah. When you get a cold like an infection, a respiratory tract infection, goblet cells secrete more mucus to protect you. That's why you hack up lung cookies. Did I ever tell you? I couldn't have. Anyways, I had this 1988 Dodge Dakota pickup, and it was so it was just beat up, and I refused to get rid of it. The driver's side door didn't work, so I had to climb in the passenger side, and the the alignment was so bad to go straight, I had to turn the wheel like this. And it only had one windshield wiper, and it was on the passenger side, so I had to drive like this. Anyways, I took that off and put it on the driver's side. So I'm coming home from work, right, and it's the summertime, and this guy hacks his giant lung cookie out the window and smack right on my windshield. I'm like, no problem, man. Hit the washers. It didn't have any washer fluid. So I had smeared lung cookie. Oh, uh. <laughs> Tell me you got that. Now watch. And I love these people. Smoking paralyzes cilia. It doesn't destroy them. It paralyzes them. You got me? So what do smokers do? The only way to clear their airway is to hack up the mucus. Tell me you're with me. So watch. I love people who say this. I stopped smoking and I'm coughing now more than I was when I was smoking. That's because the cilia are coming back to life and actually cleaning your lungs. So about a month after you stop smoking, you will actually cough more than you did when you're smoking, but it's actually cleaning your lungs. Tell me you got that. So how many people smoke cigarettes? Nobody smokes here? You just don't want to say anything, right? It's on tape. I get it. <laughs> right? If it's not on tape, I can deny it. All right? Where's the other place you find cilia? 
Right. Now watch. And th this you should know. You know what's amazing is that how women, they, they got a lot of stuff going on, and they don't really know how it works. You know what I'm saying? Like, did you know that you can only get pregnant about three or four days a month? Did you know that? So the thing I can't get out of my head is on Maury and Who's Your Baby's Daddy, when they bring on like 15 guys, didn't they tell them that? It's fake? Let me tell you something. Th those shows have a lot of socially redeeming value. Do you know why? If you watch them and then you think to yourself, you know what, I'm not that jacked up. Look at those people. And then the other thing I can't get out of my head is why would you want some of those guys to be the father? Do you know, and this is a fact, that women have the ability to produce antibodies to sperm of guys that they don't have an emotional attachment to? Did you know that? So the guy that the woman has the strongest emotional attachment to is most likely the father. That's a fact. So if you guys, if you don't want to, if you want to make sure a woman gets pregnant, yell at her. <laughs> I don't like you. <laughs> then you have makeup sex, right? Okay, watch. This also is the um, emblem for the Texas Roadhouse. <laughs> <laughs> know this, the ovaries and the fallopian tubes are not directly connected. You know that, right? So when a woman ovulates and pops out Egbert, the ends of the fallopian tubes have cilia on them. And the cilia will actually beat and draw the egg into the fallopian tube where fertilization occurs. Are you with me? Now, sometimes if you bump ugly with dude, right, you can get a real aggressive Michael Phelps type sperm and they can actually fertilize the egg outside of the reproductive tract. And that fertilized egg tends to lodge onto like an intestine and the baby will start to develop on the intestinal wall. That's called an ectopic pregnancy. So that's how a woman can develop an ectopic pregnancy with the knowledge that the ovaries and the fallopian tubes are not directly connected. Yeah? And just so you know, you know this, right? That every month you alternate ovaries, right? One month, one ovary, the other, the other ovary. You know that, right? And during leap year, you don't ovulate at all. <laughs> Say yeah. Okay, watch. What's this? Just real quick. What is this? The cervix, right? This is the body of the uterus, and then it narrows to a neck. See how this all kind of comes together? Cervi cervical, neck. I thought you'd be a little more impressed. Okay. Um, well, since we're on this, just real quick. I'll go over it. I save reproduction to the last um, thing because it always goes bad. It always goes south quickly. Um, real quick, um, just so you know, a woman is more likely to become pregnant if she has an orgasm during sex. Here's why. You have these little indentations here, these recesses called fornices. That's where they get the word fornication from. And the cervix is muscular. So when a woman has an orgasm, the cervix will actually contract and relax and work like a suction device to suck the seminal fluid 
into the uterus, so they're more likely to become pregnant. The other thing is, is that when a woman ovulates, the mucus that's secreted by the, the reproductive tract, the uterus, actually becomes thickened, and it will actually make ropes, ropes of protein, where the sperm can actually, you know, hold on like you're going skiing. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. And it's a greater chance for fertilization. So uh, again, this is an example of the body doing stuff that makes sense, right? When do you want to have the greatest chance for, to get pregnant? When you ovulate. So I don't know if you guys do this, but checking cervical mucus is one of the ways. And as it thickens, <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, anyways, <laughs> that's for another day. Uh, tell me you got that, right? Okay, and then one more thing since we're on it. Um, how many people are on birth control? Okay, so <laughs> you didn't have to respond. <laughs> anyways, um, watch. Would it make sense for the ovary to ovulate if you were pregnant, would that make sense? Would it make sense to release another egg knowing that you can't support another pregnancy? So when you're pregnant, the hormone progesterone goes up. Are you following me? And progesterone, the function of it is to thicken that endometrial lining in anticipation of coitus and fertilization of the egg. And then once the egg is fertilized, it implants into that thickened endometrial lining so the kid will start to grow. Do you follow that? So what progesterone, what birth control does is tricks your pituitary gland into thinking that you're pregnant all the time. So it won't cause you to ovulate. So the drug that's in birth control pills is basically progesterone. So the shot that you get, the Depa Provera shot, is really a large dose of progesterone. Say yeah. And then if you don't use that, you use the Wheel of Fortune. The last three pills, I think, are sugar pills. So you get this drop in progesterone, you get a little mini period, and then you go back on the Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> Fabulous prizes. <laughs> Tell me uh, you got that. I like to refer to it, and guys, you can back me up on this if you like. If not, I get it. It's like this, right? So this is house and um, dog house. Or like I like to call it Chateau Bow Wow. <laughs> I'm just playing. Now, just real quick, the good thing uh, about guys is guys produce testosterone till the day they die. So a guy on his deathbed could father a child. And to be honest, that's probably the best time to do it. No child's part. <laughs> and what a way to go out, right? So can I tell you this real quick story? And then we'll end it tonight because I can see you're dying. I know you are, because watch, I see it. This is how it works, right? You're like this. It's like 6 o'clock, you're like. That's 7.30, you're like. 8.30, right? You're almost comatose. So just real quick, I work at this company. I've been working there for 24 years. There's a guy there named Abe, right? He's 96 years old. He still works four days a week. Do you, do you ever see on backs of semis those little metal placards that says, like, flammable, right? He invented those, right? So anyways, he was married for 67 years. That's a lifetime, right? Can't even imagine that. Ugh. <laughs> oh, did I just do that? Yeah. Sorry. Anyways, his wife passed away, right? She passed away about 10 years ago. So he came in to see me, and he doesn't typically work on Friday, and I come in on Friday. So he'll only come in on Friday to see me. And he's like, Timmy, can I talk to you? 
I'm like, yeah, sure. So this is about like, this is a couple years ago. So it was probably six or seven years after his wife uh, passed away. So I uh, said, sit down, Abe, well, what, what can I do for you? And he goes, I want to ask you a question. I said, okay. He goes, do you think it's safe enough for me to have sex? I go, with a woman? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. And I go, absolutely. Are you kidding me? That's every man's dream to go out that way, right? Oh, wait. <laughs> Anyways, so I go, yeah, she's probably young, huh? Right? Picking up these young women. I go, she's probably, you know, 75, 80. And he looks at me and goes, you ever look at those women? They're awful. <laughs> Swear to God. So I go, how old is she? 55. So I stood up and I gave him a high five. I'm like, dude, rock on with thy bad self. <laughs> All right, ambulate home. Guys, guys, wait, I'm still recording. Here we go. You're going to need to look at how a cell makes a protein. Yeah? And, hate to do this to you. Look at it. Look at it. You don't have to study it, know every, look at it. So when I'm talking, you got a clue. Yeah? All right. How a cell makes a protein. And then I want you to look at the functions of insulin and metabolisms part one and part two. Look at them. Look all the way. Just don't look. Oh, yeah, there it is. The functions of insulin. I looked at it. Go through it because I'm going to be talking about some stuff. And if you didn't look at these, I'm telling you right now, you are going to be completely lost. And you don't want to be completely lost. Say yeah. And I know I'm getting this cross-contamination because you're like, geez, I'm worried about, right, osmosis. I Tough. What do you want me to do? I'll give you the quiz number one on Thursday, no. if you want. Okay, so we got to do it. We can't stare at each other for a, another class. Wouldn't be nice. Do you under, uh, will you do that? You want the functions of insulin? Oh, wait, how a cell makes a protein? Oh, wait, wait. Don't hate. Basic structure of DNA. How a cell makes a protein. Yes? And then insulin and metabolism part one and two. Just look at it, just so you hear some terms. Would you do that? Or read about metabolism in your book. <laughs> yeah? Okay.